Okay, question 21 then of May 2018, time zone 2, high level chemistry, people 1. So 21, which statement is correct? The value of the rate constant is independent of temperature. Well, no, it's not. It increases with temperature and is deduced from the equilibrium constant. No, it's not. You don't get it from the equilibrium constant. I can't think of any relationship between them. I mean, delta G and KC, yeah, but not, little, uh, not rate constant. So yeah, wrong and wrong. The value of the rate constant is independent of temperature. No, it's not. And the overall reaction order determines its units. Yes, it does, because then, of course, you get all the moles per decimeter cube versus moles per decimeter cube per second for the rate. So you do get the, the unit of K can vary depending on um, what uh, the uh, rate equation is. So that bit's correct. Uh, the value of the rate constant is temperature dependent. Yes, it is. And is deduced from the equilibrium constant. No, it's not. And then the value of the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. Yes, it is. It increases with temperature. And the overall reaction order determines its units. Yes, it does. What we mean by that, for example, imagine you had a reaction where K equals, uh, so rate equals K times the concentration of X times the concentration of Y uh, squared. Uh, so second order with respect to Y. Then if we rearrange that, then K equals rate over concentration of X times the concentration of Y squared so rate is typically moles per decimeter cube per second and then you'd have all these moles per decimeter cube in the bottom moles per decimeter cube for x and then you'd have moles per decimeter cube twice for y because it's second order so it's like y times y essentially so then one of those would cancel one of those and then what we're left with is it would be decimeters to the six mole to the minus two because of course these get added together and then we flip the signs because they're on the bottom we want to bring them back up top seconds to the minus one so that's uh, the example of the units for the rate constant if it was third or third order overall if it was first order overall it would be decimeters to the three mole to the minus one seconds to the minus one 22 which factor does not affect the position of equilibrium in this reaction uh, well a change in the volume would affect it because we've got two molecules of gas on the left only one on the right so let's say, for example, we decrease the size of the volume, that would increase the pressure, and therefore it would shift to the right, uh, to the side with fewer molecules of gas. So not that one. Change in temperature, well, the reaction is exothermic, so if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium would shift to the left to favour the reverse endothermic reaction. So that's incorrect. Addition of a catalyst, well, that uh, decreases the activation energy for both the forward and the reverse reaction, so there's no effect on the equilibrium position. You just get there faster, so that one's good. Whereas changing pressure, as we talked about, well, if you increase the pressure, it'll shift to the side with fewer molecules of gas. It's not that one, so we want C, because it uh, makes both reactions faster equally. Twenty-three. What occurs when the pressure on the given equilibrium is increased at constant temperature? So, okay, temperature is kept constant. So the important thing to note there, remember, is the only thing that changes Kc is temperature. So Kc is not going to change because the temperature stays the same. So Kc stays constant. So what about okay, the position of equilibrium itself? Uh, so we've got the same number of molecules of gas on both sides, two molecules on the left, two on the right. So pressure is not actually going to have an impact. So it's going to be this one here. So we're going to go with B. 24, got the activity series of selected elements, and we can see copper is quite low down, lower than hydrogen in the reactivity series. So which reactive dilutes sulfuric acid? Well, copper metal doesn't because it's less reactive than hydrogen. Copper oxide and copper carbonate are both bases, so they will react and neutralize acids. So, for example, you'd get copper oxide plus sulfuric acid would give you uh, copper sulfate plus water. And you'd get copper carbonate plus sulfuric acid would also give you copper sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide. So it's two and three only. So we want to go with this one here. Copper does react with concentrated nitric acid, but that's in a different reaction. It's not what I call a mash reaction, where metal plus acid gives you salt plus hydrogen. 25. Uh, which statement is correct? A strong acid is a good proton donor. Yes, it is. And has a strong conjugate base. No, it doesn't. It would have a, a very, very weak conjugate base. That's why it's a strong acid. So that's incorrect. A weak acid is a poor proton acceptor. No, it's not. That would be a weak base and has a strong conjugate base. Uh, possibly, I'm not sure that's so like essential. A weak acid would often have a fairly weak, uh, well, a relatively strong conjugate base compared to it, but 
At the same time, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. I wouldn't say that ethanoic is a particularly strong conjugate base. So I'm not really sure that I sort of agree strongly with both of those. Uh, a strong acid is a good proton donor. Yes, it is. And has a weak conjugate base. Uh, yes, I agree with that. That's why I really don't want to sort of proton it again. And it remains fully dissociated as the strong acid. A strong base is a good proton donor. No, it's not. It's a good proton acceptor and has a weak conjugate acid. Well, that would be true. So it's got to be C, where it's only those two are correct. 26, which is an example of a Lewis base. Well, remember, a Lewis base is uh, an uh, electron pair donor. So it's something with a lone pair of electrons. So an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. So it's not that one. It's just, that would be the same as a Lewis acid. BF3 is a good Lewis acid. So it's not going to be this one. And that's because BF3 can, of course... Uh, receive a coordinate bond as in to form the tetrafluoroborate ion where it's basically accepted a lone pair of electrons from a fluoride ion to give the tetrafluoroborate one because it doesn't have an expanded octet here. Uh, so methane, well that's pretty much nothing really. Uh, there aren't even any lone pairs of electrons. It's not a good Lewis acid or base. So a Lewis base, that would be a nucleophile. Okay, good, long, good uh, nucleophile because it's a lone pair of electrons and therefore it can be an electron pair donor. So that's what we're after. So for example, something like water would be quite a good nucleophile because it's got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen which you can then donate. What is the order of increase in acidity? Now I've seen this sort of question before. It's, you can't compare this one with this one. We've got to work out which is the more acidic of these and work out which is the more acidic of these, and then there should only be one possibility which fits for both of them. So for pKa, the way pKa works is the lower the number, the more acidic it is. So in this case, this one is more acidic. So if HiO3 is more acidic than HClO, then okay, that one works here because it's a head, it's shown it's more acidic than that one. This one doesn't work because it's showing that it's... Uh, no, that one does work, sorry, yeah, that one show, shows it works. This one, however, doesn't work because it's got the the weaker one as being more acidic, and so this one doesn't work either. So it's got to be one of these two where sort of um, the HiO3 is more acidic than the HClO. Now Ka, we're looking for the opposite. Basically, the uh, bigger number with the Ka is the more acidic. So 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4 is bigger than 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's the bigger number, so that's going to be the more acidic one. So now we're looking for the other possibility where HF is actually uh, the more acidic one here. So that one can't be right. It's got HF below the propanoic acid, so it must be this one. Okay, so that's the only combination which fits both criteria. 28, which can describe oxidation? A loss of hydrogen. Well, yes, it is. Reduction is a gain of hydrogen or a loss of hydrogen. So that's correct. A decrease in oxidation number. That's a reduction. So oxidation is an increase in oxidation number. Oil rig oxidation is loss, not a gain of electrons. So that's a reduction again. And loss of oxygen, well, oxidation is gain in oxygen. So a loss would also be a reduction. So it's A. 29, what are the products of the electrolysis of molten zinc bromide? Well, if it's molten, all we've got is zinc 2 plus and Br minus. Opposites attract. So zinc will be attracted to the negative electrode and turned into zinc atoms so it's going to be uh, zinc hydrogen we don't have an aqueous solution if it was aqueous then yes we'd get hydrogen but uh, it's not and then at the other electrode then well you have the bromide ions they'll be attracted to the positive electrode because opposites attract when they get there they'll become br2 by losing two electrons so we get bromine so we're going to go with a and then number 30 two cells undergoing electrolysis are connected in series uh, so we've got silver nitrate, sulfuric acid, and then we've got if x grams of silver are deposited in cell 1, what volume of oxygen in decimeters cubed at STP is given off in cell 2? Okay, so the ions we've got in this one will be Ag plus NO3 minus, and then in this one we've got... This one is H plus sulfate, and we've also got OH minus in there. 
So what's going to be happening in this one is you're going to get those silver ions, which are just uh, Ag+. They will gain an electron and form silver. And then at the other one, we'll have the hydroxide ions. So four OH- ions will then... And of course, the OH- comes from water uh, kind of uh, dissociating. The acid is just there to sort of give a high concentration of ions, really. So you have four OH-, well, that would then give you O2 plus uh, 2H2O plus four electrons. Now, we can see there's four electrons in this one. There's only one electron in this one. So this one is basically going to be, uh, so we'd have to multiply that up by four. So four AGs will give you four uh, four Ag plus will give you four Ag's. So our overall equation, if we were to write it, would be four Ag plus, don't bother to include the electrons, they'll cancel, plus four OH minus ions, gives us uh, four Ag's plus O2 plus two H2O. So we can see that for every four silvers, we only get one oxygen. How many moles of silver do we uh, make? Well, there's x grams, and the number of moles would be x divided by the relative atomic mass of silver. So it's going to be x divided by 108, and then whatever the number of moles of silver is, we'd have to divide that by 4, because you only get, it's a 4 to 1 ratio of silver to oxygen. And then once we know the number of moles of oxygen, having divided by 4 or multiplied by a quarter, we then just multiply by the volar volume of ideal gas to tell us the actual volume, to convert the moles of oxygen to a volume of gas. So we're going to go with 8.